What's up guys, welcome to episode 3. In the last two episodes I talked about what is science and what is the scientific method. In this episode I'll be talking about how we can perform an immaculate scientific method in our lives. Well, the reason why I ask this question is because many of us think that if we follow the six-step process that I explained in the previous episode, which is about the scientific method, we actually guarantee that we find a true answer to our questions. However, many of us and even many of the scientists themselves fall into some traps that result in some answers that we may think that they are scientific but they are at best pseudoscientific. So what do I mean by that? We use a scientific method to find a true answer to our question. If we wanted any answer to our question, we could have used any other methods like using religion, tradition, and other things that have many answers to questions that are not scientific. But sometimes we become too hasty about the answers that we find from a scientific method. It means that we quickly conclude that this is the true answer. This is to show that if you don't perform a true scientific method, you might have not so much of a difference from a person who is religious. The answer to hard science questions like physics, mathematics, chemistry are pretty solid. It means that we rarely doubt that there is something which is called the law of gravity because it has been proved by mathematics. But in social science, scientists must be a little bit more careful about their answers. For example, consider Freud's psychoanalytic theory, which implies that our false behavior in adulthood is actually the result of our repressed childhood desires. Many believe that this theory is true, but as always, this theory is in the realms of psychology, and psychology is a social science. So you can find many other incidences that can disprove this theory. If we can only find one example that can disprove this theory, we can consider that this theory has been falsified. So now we come to the term falsification. Falsification is one of the most important concepts in science. Falsification means that scientists must try to show that a theory is wrong, and if they fail to do so, they actually strengthen a theory. Falsification is the opposite of verification and confirmation. In science, you shouldn't try to confirm a theory, but actually, you should try to falsify a theory. For example, consider that you are sitting in a park and seeing some white swans in the lake. And you think to yourself that all swans might be white. So to test your hypothesis, you go to two or three other parks to see if the swans in other parks are also white or not. You see in those parks that yes, those swans as well were white. So you conclude that all swans are white. But actually, this approach to finding answer is non-scientific. What we actually should do is to try as hard as possible to only find one black swan to disprove our hypotheses. We as scientific people shouldn't try to confirm our hypotheses, but actually should try to disprove and falsify our hypotheses. The other trap that we might fall into is causation versus correlation. It means that we often confuse the correlation between two factors as a cause and effect relationship. For example, studies have shown that there is a correlation between alcoholic parents and their kids poor performance in school. So if you see this headline in news, you think that alcoholic parents actually result in lazy kids. But this is not true. This is only correlation. It means that these two factors have some positive relationship with each other. It means that if the number of one factor increases, the number of the other factor increases as well, and vice versa. It doesn't mean that one factor actually causes the other factor. Other traps that we often fall into are our biases in life. Confirmation bias, hindsight bias, optimism bias, and many other biases that I completely and thoroughly explained in a series of episodes that I made about the book Thinking Fast and Slow. I will put the link somewhere here, you should definitely check it out. So all these traps make us to think 
that we are actually doing a scientific approach to our lives but at best we are imitating a scientific approach to life. So the important thing here is to know about these traps and always avoid them. Alright guys, so in this episode I try to explain what are traps in scientific method and how we can avoid them. In the next episode I'll be talking about how we can create a scientific mental models for ourselves to get a clear understanding of our surroundings. Hey, thank you guys for watching. If you like this episode, drop a like to my video and consider subscribing to my channel. I will see you in the episode 4. Until then, peace out.